Let's work on the next notebook on third-party modules. In the previous notebook, we learned that we can import certain modules that come with your standard Python library. It would import things like math and we got access to some mathematical functions. A lot of you are learning Python because of the ecosystem that Python is. Apart from the standard library, which has got functions that are useful for everybody who's using Python, there's a huge collection of third-party libraries that people have written for domain-specific needs, including geospatial. So let's say you encountered a problem and you solved it using Python and said, this is, I could write a lot of code, I could solve this using Python. Let me share my work with others. Let me put this function I wrote to do some computation, put this in a file and share it with others. So others can also use that. If you have developed such code, you can go and upload them into this place called Python Package Index. This is the, the most commonly used way to share packages. Many people have developed packages that do from simple things to very complex things. We have a huge collection of third-party geospatial libraries that do things like coordinate conversion, geospatial analysis, raster conversion, you know, extracting data from satellite images and so on. So you have this huge collection. The most common place people share it is this Python package index. This is a place where people share it. You can see currently, this place has more than 10, 000, 10 million files that people have shared. And you know each file can have multiple functions. And if you want to get anything from here, you can install it in your computer and you have those functions available. One of the packages we'll use is this package called GeoPy. So you can see this is a project where they say we wrote, wrote some code to help you geocode addresses. We have some functions to compute distances and so on. And they have shared it on this space. So now this function is available. You can see, you can say pip install GeoPy. So in your, if you want to open a terminal and say pip install GeoPy, it'll download all the files required and suddenly you'll have those GeoPy functions. One of the problems with installing stuff from PyPy using pip is that it works well for you know, packages which do not have many dependencies. There are many packages which are saying, okay, I want to do X, but to do X, I'll need Y. So I'll also import another package and I'll use functions from this and I'll build on top of that. And then another library will come and say, I'll also import X. So I'll also use X, which is depending on Y. And if you have this kind of dependencies, what if there's a package that says, I want version two of X and version one of Y. And you want to install another package and say, oh, no, no, I want version three of X and version two of Y. Now you have a conflict. You cannot install both of them together. And this, started becoming a big problem in the Python ecosystem. When you try to install stuff, you'll have this conflict of different versions and you cannot resolve them and it became quite a pain to install stuff. So over time, a new system was invented, which is Conda. So this is what we use in this course. So Conda is an alternate package manager, which works much better with dependencies. So if you are an author of a package, you say, I have created this package, I want to share it with the world. You can upload to PyPy. So people can install using this pip install command or you can upload to Conda and you can install using Conda. Conda installations are generally much easier. So for example, you will install GeoPandas. That library depends on hundreds of other libraries. If you wanted to install it correctly using pip, you had a sequence of commands that you run, install this, downgrade this package, you know, get this package version of this, and then finally get the library that works fine. With Conda, it was just Conda install GeoPandas and it worked fine, right? So Conda solves a lot of the pain with package management. So it's another way to do this. One of the things to note is Conda is backed by a commercial company. There's a company called Anaconda that makes and maintains this Conda packages. And they have certain terms of service, which says if you are working for a large company, you have to buy a license. If you're an individual or a small company, you can use Conda without any payment. There's an alternate to Conda called Mamba, which is an open source version of Conda. So if you say, I like the way Conda works, it resolves all the dependencies. I don't want to use Conda, I want to use the free open source version. There's something called Mamba. But the concept is that you have a package, if it's on Conda or PyPy, you will be able to install this in your environment. Once you install it, installation simply gets those files to your local system, so you can use that. We're going to work with this package called GeoPy. Once you find a package that you want to work with, you will typically go and check out this website. Most big packages will have their main documentation where you can learn more about this. GeoPy is one of the core libraries for doing geospatial work in Python. So I recommend you go and learn more about this in the documentation. This library is mainly used for geocoding. Geocoding is the process of taking an address, a real-world address, 
and turning this into coordinates. This is the kind of primary intention of GeoPy. We'll be working with GeoPy in our assignment. So we'll talk about GeoPy a little later on. But you can see they have a way to compute distance. We learned that you can implement this Haversen formula on a sphere. But what about doing you know, geodesic distance along an ellipsoid? That formula can run into like five pages. Like it's a very long, complicated way to implement this. So rather than implementing ourselves, we can say, oh, GeoPy has already implemented that. Let's just use that formula. We don't need to implement it ourselves. We'll just install GeoPy. We'll get a function to compute that, and we can use that. So you can see Geo, GeoPy has this model, GeoPy with distance, and this has got two methods, grid circle distance, assuming Earth is a sphere, and geodesic distance, assuming Earth is one of those ellipsoids. And you can use any of the commonly known ellipsoids. If you want to use WGS84, we can say, use WGS84 and compute the distance between those two coordinates along this WGS84 ellipsoid. So let's see how we can use GeoPy distance computation to do an ellipsoid distance. We've already installed GeoPy using Conda. So if you are activated the environment and launch Jupyter Lab, you should be able to import it. So let's see if we can import GeoPy first. So we can say import GeoPy. And it worked. So if you do not get any error when you say import GeoPy, you have it installed in your environment and you are good to go. If you get an error that GeoPy is not installed or it cannot found, that means either you did not install GeoPy or you did not activate the environment where it was installed. One of the things it's a good practice when you are working with Python is you can create a new environment where you can install certain packages. So if you are working on a project, you say, I need these five packages from Conda, create a new environment, install those packages. Those packages are only installed in that environment. So if you start a new project, you create a new environment, install the packages you need. And that ensures that you do not have this problem of dependencies. If you install like 1,000 packages in the same environment, it is likely at some point you'll run into conflict where certain packages have different mismatching versions. So good package, uh, good practice is always to create a new environment when you work in a new project. We have our Python foundation environment where we installed all the libraries needed for this course. So we were able to import GeoPy. For now, we just want to use the distance model. So instead of importing GeoPy like this, we can say from GeoPy import distance. So we'll just use the distance module for now. So we have imported this distance module. And now to compute the distance, we don't need to implement anything. We have the GeoPies function, we can just call that. So we have the same two coordinates that we have done before. So we say we are gonna use GeoPy, we have these two coordinates, and now we can just use this function. So first we'll do the grade circle distance. This is using the Haver sign formula. So we can say distance dot grade circle from these two coordinates. And we can print that. And you can see it just gives us the answer 415 kilometers. Same answer as before because it's using the same calculation on a spherical Earth. If you wanted an ellipsoid distance, we can say instead of distance dot grade circle, we can say distance dot geodesic. And same thing, we can provide an optional parameter that this is the ellipsoid we want to use. If you want to use a different ellipsoid, you can use that. And now we can print the ellipsoid distance. And you can see slight difference. In this case, we have an error of 10 kilometers in distance if we used a spherical model of the Earth versus an ellipsoidal model of Earth. So for applications which are not very sensitive to accuracy, you can go and do a simple calculation. This is fast, easy, and you know, for most distances, the difference is negligible. For more accurate analysis, you can use the GeoPy and use the geodesic distance and get the correct distance. So this is how you install and use a third-party library. One of the things that GeoPy also offers is many of you would say, you know, I want my distance in miles, not in kilometers. So, so in the past, we had to divide by a certain factor, multiply by the conversion factor into this. What GeoPy also gives you is an ability to convert the distance in different units. So let me just print the type of this. So whatever GeoPy returns is not a number. We printed it and we can see this print sets 4.45 kilometers, but it's not a number. When you call distance or geodesic or distance or grid circle, what you get is a GeoPy distance object. You can use this and say, 
I want my distance in kilometers. So you can say distance.km, you get distance in kilometers, which is a number now. You can say, I want distance in miles, I get distance in miles. So it has got the conversions built into it as well. If you want in nautical miles, NM and so on. And all of this is documented here on this module. So you can also convert the distance between the different units. The idea was you, if you have the right package, you can just install it and use it for your analysis directly. There's a question, if you need a package once, then the environment is already created. Do we need to go back to an account up prompt to install a new module? Can we do that by writing a code in JupyterLab? It's a good question. The good practice is to always, let's say I have my environment and I'm, let's say I'm in my Python foundation. Now in my environment, I need a new package. So let's say I need to work with this new package called X-Ray. This is a package for doing geospatial raster analysis in Python. I want to install this. So I can install it using Conda install X-Ray. When you want to install, there are two different places in Conda which you can install from. One is the default channel. So Conda is also a commercial company to sell their package solution to many large companies. So they vet and verify each package so that you make sure it's not malicious. They make sure they all work together. So when you say Conda install X-Ray, it goes to the default channel, which is the you know, uh, viewed you know, channel, which has got all the packages which are reviewed by the Anaconda team. A lot of the newer versions of packages are not available, or the smaller packages are also not available there. So they offer another way called Conda Forge. The Conda Forge is another channel where they say, anybody can go and upload the package. We don't really verify it. We don't ensure that it works, but it's a public channel that anybody can upload that. So most of the packages for geospatial, they are small enough, they're not in the main channel. So that's why we use install it from Conta Forge. So you can install this and it will install this package. In from Jupyter, if you want to install this in the Jupyter environment, it gives you this ability to run a command on your terminal directly from Jupyter Lab. So you can say something like this, exclamation, Conta install this, and it'll go and install this in your environment. So when you prefix anything with the exclamation mark, that will be considered as a command that is run on your terminal behind the scenes. So that's an easy way to do this. I'm in my environment. I don't want to switch to it. I can just do, you know, exclamation and do this. Same thing works with pip. One of the things that ha might happen is you have a Conda environment, you install everything, and it says there's one package which the author is only uploaded to PyPy, not in Conda. So what do I do? I'm stuck. Like I have everything else in Conda. There's one package I need is only in PyPy. So you can also use pip within Conda. So I can say pip install geopy. Pip also works. So you can install pip packages within a Conda environment, but only use this as a last resort because if you install with pip, sometimes you get this dependency conflicts. So you can also run this. Sometimes you'll see a lot of notebooks with commands like this, pip install geopy, right? That means just run the command to install geopy on my terminal behind the scenes. So when you see something with an exclamation mark, that usually means that they're running this command on the system that they're running. I personally like to make sure that I keep my environment clean. So I do not want to run stuff from the Jupyter. I go and manually install. But again, that's a matter of preference. If you feel comfortable, you can just install directly from a Jupyter environment.